The cows all of a sudden started running like a stampede. I was picked up by the tornado and there was all sorts of debris. One thing I remember was the cow that flew past me. He was screaming. And then before I knew it, it was over and I was just laying in the field next to a tractor engine. This is Robert St. John in the NBC newsroom in New York. We have just been informed that we can expect in a very few seconds, in a very few seconds, a very important broadcast from the British capital. And so now we take you to London. People of Western Europe, a landing was made this morning on the coast of France by troops of the Allied Expeditionary Force. This landing is part of the concerted United Nations plan for the liberation of Europe. Almighty God, with thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Help us to conquer the apostles of greed and racial arrogance. Lead us to the saving of our country and with our sister nations into a world unity that will spell a sure peace. Thy will be done, almighty God. Amen. Captain Zappacosta was first off and first hit. Staff Sergeant Dick Wright from Lynchburg was second, and he was also hit as he left the boat. A medic was third, and I didn't see what happened to him. I caught my heel in the ramp and fell sideways, and this undoubtedly saved my life. by machine guns was frightening. All of the men that followed me were either killed or drowned. As far as I know, no one from my craft was ever found alive. At this point, we were not sure the invasion would succeed. Our company was shot up so badly that there was no organization, and we didn't know what other sectors were doing. We felt helpless and alone. Hello. The Bible says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. O oh, friend, Bible prophecy now is rapidly being fulfilled. God's people are going to be seeing death all around them. In this program, you're going to see things leading people to the second death, just as surely as these dear men were led to the first. Welcome to part two of Roman Catholic Attack on God's Seventh-day Adventist Church. Let me remind you that as an ordained Seventh-day Adventist minister, I'm standing in loyal defense of God's 6,000-year-old Seventh-day Adventist Church against the horrible Roman Catholic attack going on against it. I tell you, friend, the evidence is so tremendous. Uh, if you haven't seen it, watch my first series, 12-part series, Catholic Charismatic Attack, and this is part two of an even stronger series, showing the evidence of this attack mounting up into the heavens. Listen, friend, the prophet of God says, quote, the youth should seek God more earnestly. The tempest is coming, and we must get ready for its fury by having repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will arise to shake terribly the earth. Fires will break out unexpectedly, and no human effort will be able to quench them. The palaces of earth will be swept away in the fury of the flames. Death, without a moment's warning, will occur on the great lines of travel. The end is near. Probation is closing. Oh, let us seek God 
while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Maranatha, page 37. I quote, The scene that next passed before me was an alarm of fire. Men looked at lofty and supposedly fireproof buildings and said, They are perfectly safe. But these buildings were consumed as if made of pitch. Life Sketches, page 15. Country Living, page 8. The time is near when large cities will be swept away and all should be warned of these coming judgments. Oh, friend, listen, it says, quote, Oh, that God's people had a sense of the impending destruction of thousands of cities now almost given to idolatry. Review and Herald, September 10, 1903. Again, I quote, From the windows I could behold a terrible conflagration. Great balls of fire were falling upon houses, and from these balls fiery arrows were flying in every direction. The terror of the people was indescribable. Evangelism, page 29. Again, I quote, I stood on an eminence from which I could see houses shaken like a reed in the wind. Buildings great and small were falling to the ground. Pleasure resorts, theaters, hotels, and the homes of the wealthy were shaken and shattered. Many lives were blotted out of existence. And the air was filled with shrieks of the injured and the terrified. Country Living, page 9. Again, I quote, the destroying angels of God were at work. There was no assurance of safety in any place. I did not feel in any special peril, but the awfulness of the scenes that passed before me, I cannot find words to describe. It seemed that the forbearance of God was exhausted and that the judgment day had come." Unquote. Oh, friend, listen. I quote, Soon there appears in the east a small black cloud, half the size of a man's hand. It is the cloud which surrounds the Savior and which seems in the distance to be shrouded in darkness. The people of God know this to be the sign of the Son of Man. In solemn silence they gaze upon it as it draws nearer the earth becoming lighter and more glorious until it is a great white cloud, its base a glory like consuming fire, and above it the rainbow of the covenant. Jesus rides forth as a mighty conqueror. No human pen can portray the scene. No mortal mind is adequate con to conceive its splendor. Before his presence, all faces are turned into paleness. Upon the rejecters of God's mercy falls the terror of eternal despair. The heart melteth, the knees smite together, and the faces of them all gather blackness. Jeremiah 30, verse 6, and Nahum 2, verse 10. The derisive jests have ceased. Lying lips are hushed into silence. The righteous cry with trembling, Who shall be able to stand? The angel's song is hushed, and there is a period of awful silence. Then the voice of Jesus is heard saying, My grace is sufficient for you. The faces of the righteous are lighted up, and joy fills every heart. The angels strike a note higher and sing again as they draw still nearer to the earth. Great controversy, 640. And 641. Oh, friend, praise God. Praise God. You can see, friend, the end now is very near as this earth rapidly approaches the year 2000. Who knows that we would ever get there? There is no assurance we will ever get that far. There is only months left between now and the things I just quoted to you, the number of which only God knows. We do not know, but, friend, Time is fast running out, and whatever you do for God, we need to do it now. The attack 
this great Roman Catholic attack that you're going to see in this program. We're going to see it coming from a different angle than we've ever showed you before. Get ready for a shock, friend, because you're going to see amazing things. Satan is coming from different angles than what people are expecting, bringing with him the mark of the beast, uh, the uh, fact that people will be caught by surprise and fall into his trap. Many Sabbath keepers, many Seventh-day Adventists are going to be caught by surprise who are not clinging to Jesus and have a full surrender to the lovely Jesus and they will receive the mark of the beast. Friends, you're going to see now things where actually the devil himself the prophet said is converted after the modern order of things and is trying to sweep the whole world into spiritualism. Romanism is right in the middle of it. Spiritualism, apostate Protestantism are all wrapped up together leading to the national Sunday law. Listen now closely and watch closely as we go on and we see these amazing interviews with these amazing people having actually purported to have talked with Mary, which was really the devil, and uh, through Mary, which is the devil in disguise, the whole world and the people of this country are being prepared for the mark of the beast as well as Seventh-day Adventists. And in this sense, we see an angle of the great Roman Catholic attack that we have never seen before. Watch closely. To the people who would, for the very first time, hear these messages that have come from the apparitions of the Virgin Mary, that have come from angels, that have come from other people who maybe have had dreams and these types of warnings, I would say to them to take a good look around the world and honestly ask themselves, what do they see? Do they see a world that's growing in love and peace, or do they see a world that's hanging by a thread? Sunday used to be the Lord's Day, a day of worship and rest from work. Today, our Sundays are crammed with chores and errands. The malls are filled with shoppers and workers. But in particular, the sports craze dominates our Sunday culture, no longer leaving any room for the sacred and the observance of the Sabbath. What has been the effect of not observing and keeping the Sabbath holy? Churches are closing, the divorce rate is exploding, and abortion on demand is the law of our land. Violence and crime have been declared a national epidemic. There are more criminals in prison today in the state of Texas alone than there were in the entire United States just 35 years ago. In this century, over 200 million people have been killed from communism and wars. Are we witnessing the greatest hoax in the history of Christianity? Or is this the real thing? Are we, as we are being told, truly living in the end times? Many of the visionaries and scholars say we are. The entire world is being deluged with reports of apparitions of Jesus and Mary. The messages they are giving us through chosen souls are serious, urgent and apocalyptic. Nearly always they are reinforced by signs and wonders. Statues weep human tears and human blood. Rose petals fall from the sky. People experience the wounds of Jesus, often referred to as the stigmata. The Eucharistic bread and wine change into real flesh and blood and numerous celestial phenomena continue to occur. Did God simply abandon us to the attack of Satan foreseen by Pope Leo? I have always taught, and all those who instructed me in the faith have always taught me, and I'm firmly convinced that that was a God-sent warning to the popes who followed him, particularly Pius X, and for the others who have followed him since then, the five or six popes of this century, that 
the biggest crisis facing the Church of Christ was to take place in this century up to the close, up to the year 2000 as we speak about it. I am convinced that it's veritably the revelation of God. In 1917, during the darkest days of World War I, Pope Benedict XV gave the Blessed Mother the title Queen of Peace and implored her intercession to the end of the war. One week later, she appeared to three young children in Fatima, Portugal. She came to Fatima wearing a mantle with a star on the front, affirming her role as intercessor. She called herself the Lady of the Rosary and asked people to pray the rosary every day for peace in the world. She warned us, however, that if her requests were not fulfilled, Russia would spread her errors throughout the world, fomenting wars and persecution of the church. She said that God permits wars as punishment for sins, and even whole nations could be annihilated. To prevent this, she asked that the Pope consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart, and she asked people to make the first five Saturdays of reparation to her Immaculate Heart. You have to realize that when Our Lady appeared, Russia was not atheist. What Our Lady was saying to those children was totally unthinkable. First of all, they, didn't, they had never heard of Russia. They thought Our Lady was talking about some lady they'd never heard about. They were ignorant, isolated mountain children. But it was unthinkable to those who heard what Our Lady said, that Russia could become an atheist power, world power, that would disseminate militant atheism throughout the entire world. During these apparitions, the Blessed Mother predicted that on October 13, 1917, God would perform a great miracle so that everyone would believe in the message of Fatima, God's peace plan. On that day, 70,000 people were in Fatima to witness the promised miracle. I told you there was a pouring, violent rainstorm, pelting rain, heavy rain, the kind of a rain when you drive, you have to slow down with your windshield wipers going a mile a minute to see anything, that kind of a rain. And suddenly, as this child cried out, look at the sun in the midst of the rain, they all looked up and the, the rain stopped as though it, it had been, a faucet had been turned off. And there the clouds parted and in the opening of the clouds, they saw this ball of fire, which they took to be the sun shining through. Let's take the um, phenomenon of the miracle of the sun in Fatima, whereby the sun was seen to move from its celestial abode, hurling itself straight down to the earth, causing 70,000 people naturally to panic and fear that this was going to be the end of their lives. And then the sun retreated back to and yet one of the aspects of the miracle often overlooked is that after the phenomenon of the sun, everybody was dry. The whole cova was instantly dry. The Blessed Mother said that in the end, the Holy Father would consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. Russia would convert, and a period of peace would be given to mankind. Can this happen any other way than through God's direct intervention? From 1961 to 1965, the Blessed Mother appeared over 2,000 times to four young girls in the high mountain village of Garabandal in northern Spain. As in the times of Noah, global events were prophesied. The Blessed Mother gave us a blueprint to save the world and spare it from global destruction. The visionaries called these events the warning, the miracle, and the permanent sign. In 1985, Father Stephen Shire, a Catholic priest, had a head-on collision with a truck and found himself before the judgment seat of God where he says he was condemned to hell. Uh, with, uh, with priests and the laity, because priests would get up and talk about peace, love, and joy. Not morality, dogma, and what the church is all about. Because this made it one unpopular and 
God help if a priest was unpopular, because that means the money didn't come in. So to keep the money coming in, you had to tell people what they wanted to hear. I was before the, the, the judgment seat of our Lord. I did not see him. There was much said in regards to my life. The only thing that I did when I heard about particular instances was internally say, yes, yes, that's true. There was no rebuttal. At the end of his speaking, he said, the sentence that you will have for all eternity is hell. I thought internally, I know, this is what I deserve. Um, at that moment, I heard a female voice. The voice said, son, would you please spare his life? Our Lord said, Mother, he has been a priest for 12 years for himself and not for me. Let him reap the punishment he deserves. At that I heard her say in response, But son, if we give to him special graces and strengths and come to him in ways that he is not familiar with and see if he bears fruit, if he does not, then your will be done. There was a very short pause, and he said, Mother, he's yours. Her son gave the, the human race to her at the foot of the cross when he said, Woman, behold your son. At that moment, she took on, on all of us as her children. We have an advocate in heaven, uh, an advocate to whom God the Father and His Son and the Holy Spirit, her spouse, are unable to say no to. They, it's impossible for them to say no to her. Isn't that the kind of person that, that we would like on our side all the time? After the warning we're supposed to uh, experience within one year, another great miracle. And this, this miracle has actually been come to be known as the great miracle of Garabandal. Conchita Gonzalez is the only visionary who knows the exact date of the great miracle. She will reveal it to the world eight days in advance. I know the year is going to be happening, I know the day, but the Blessed Mother said till eight days before. The miracle, as we know it, as we're told, is going to be the greatest event of all time. It's going to make the parting of the Red Sea look like peanuts, look like nothing. The greatest event of all time is going to occur in our century. Personally, I believe it will be before the year 2000. We don't know the exact year. We only know it will be in the lifetime of the visionaries. Several things are known about the timing of the great miracle. It will happen within one year of the warning on the feast of a young Eucharistic martyr at 8.30 p.m. Spanish time on a Thursday evening. It will occur between the 8th and the 16th of the month, either during the month of March, April, or May. It will coincide with the day of ecclesial celebration in the church, and the reigning pope will see the miracle from wherever he is. Gonna be in my village, the miracle. Gonna something gonna happen in my village. In Garabandal. Yes, everybody is there 
around the village can see it. it uh, the people sick are going to be there, are going to be cured. The Blessed Mother says, Los enfermos and around. If the sinner is going to be converted, if then after that day is going to be one sign in the pines. Conchita says that after the great miracle, a permanent supernatural sign will be left at the apparition site of the nine pine trees overlooking Garabandal. We will be able to see it, photograph and televise it, but not touch it. Something we can see is only from God, going to be there forever. Do you know what sort of sign? I know the sign, but I, I don't know I can explain. I know you can see it, you can take pictures, but you can touch. The warning, the miracle, and the permanent sign will be ultimate acts of God's mercy to help the world convert. As we get to Garabandal, we know the children now are speaking about a specific chastisement that will involve fire. Some of the children at Garabandal saw visions of people on fire. And these were very, very powerful visions that stuck in their hearts and their minds. And they were so graphic that the children, literally at the time that they were given these visions, were crying and screaming. Conchita says that if the chastisement shown to her by the Blessed Mother come to the world, it would be better that her children were never born. When we see the Blessed Mother, she has so much light. We don't see nothing around us. We don't, know, we don't feel where we are. Then all the time we look up to her. The, the doctor, they do all kind of... They're studying in us. You know, they, they studied you? They stu yeah. And they say we are normal. They say you're normal? Yes. <laughs> the visionaries were examined by over 40 doctors as they received their visions in a deep state of physical ecstasy. They became so heavy they couldn't be lifted. Although at times they fell into beautiful poses and floated freely in the air. The Blessed Mother prophesied two weeks in advance an event visionary Conchita Gonzalez called a little miracle, which was captured on film. On July 18, 1962, Conchita fell to her knees and received Holy Communion from an angel only she could see. Conchita extended her tongue, and on it, moments later, appeared a communion host. This miracle was a sign of the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and confirmed the supernatural reality of the Garabandal apparitions. Unfortunately, the messages of the Blessed Mother at Garabandal were not made known to the world. So, in 1972, she began organizing an army of priests to help her. In May of 1972, the Blessed Mother began speaking to an Italian priest named Father Stefano Gobi, while he was in Fatima praying in the chapel of the apparitions. She asked him to form a cohort of priests who would help her prepare the world for the second coming of her son, Jesus. This became known as the Marian Movement of Priests, it spread like wildfire and numbers 100,000 priests. Understand how it pertains to my task as the woman clothed in the sun and as conqueror of Satan to bind the great dragon and cast him into his pool of fire. In this world, Christ will reign. Jesus will return in glory to bring all creation back to the full splendor of his new earthly paradise. In the first coming, John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when he came. Uh, he was the forerunner of Jesus. In this period of time, uh, the Blessed Mother herself, being the new Eve, is the forerunner of her son. Not that this is the end of the world, but that these are the end times. We are in the book of Revelation right now. We are living the book of Revelation. We are living the book of Revelation. On May 22, 1988, the Blessed Mother described to Father Gobi an event that sounds like the warning of Garabandal. The Holy Spirit will come to establish the glorious reign of Christ with his divine love, 
He will open the doors of hearts and illuminate all consciences. Every person will see himself in the burning fire of divine truth. It will be like a judgment in miniature. Like the children of Garabandal, on November 22, 1992, the Blessed Mother told Father Gobi about a purification of the world by fire, quoting to him from the 13th chapter of Zechariah. Listen to the words of your Heavenly Mother, who is gently preparing you and leading you to live through these events, because the times which were foretold to you by the prophet Zechariah have now come. In all the land, two-thirds of them will be cut off and perish, and one-third shall be left. I will pass this third through the fire. I will refine it as silver is refined, test it as gold is tested. In 1973, the Blessed Mother enlisted the aid of another soul consecrated to her son, Sister Agnes Sasagawa, a nun in Akita, Japan. A statue of the Blessed Mother in the convent chapel cried 101 times. On October 13, 1973, the anniversary of the vision of Pope Leo XIII and the great miracle of the sun at Fatima, the Blessed Mother gave Sister Sasagawa an urgent warning for the world. If men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priests nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms that will remain for you will be the rosary and sign left by my son. Each day recite the prayers of the rosary. By the 1980s, a multitude of apparitions were taking place. In 1981, the Blessed Mother began appearing to seven young people in Rwanda, calling herself the Mother of the Word. She showed them visions of the future, which were published years before the prophesied events took place. In Rwanda, it was a fascinating case because it prophesied a civil war that rose there a couple years ago. It prophesied a river of blood flowing through that country, and indeed, uh, many bodies were thrown into the river Kajera during a civil conflict in Rwanda a couple years ago. It prophesied uh, uh, that there would be uh, decapitated bodies even, and, and indeed one of the ways that people were killed there was by the machete, by decapitation. The message of Rwanda were, were, were several, but of course the, the underlying theme, as is the underlying theme in all her apparitions, is conversion reconciliation and it wasn't heeded in Fatima it wasn't heeded in Lourdes it wasn't heeded in Rwanda so what has happened one million people are annihilated in Rwanda what will happen if we in the next few years do not accept recognize cherish the warning of the mother how many of us will be annihilated? The signs of the times are clear, and it's only the blind that will not see. Why is the Blessed Mother repeatedly warning us about chastisements and a purification by fire? Christina Gallagher has seen visions of the future in which fire falls from the sky, striking three parts of the earth. In a supreme effort to prevent a worldwide purification by fire, the Mother of Jesus struck a blow deep into the heart of communism. On June 24, 1981, on the feast of St. John the Baptist, she began appearing every day to six young children in the mountain village of Medjugorje, in communist Yugoslavia. This initiated the greatest episode of prophecy of all time. The daily apparitions there continue to this day. Proclaiming herself as the Queen of Peace, she said, I will give you messages like never before in history, 
And I come to tell you, God exists. The Blessed Mother stated that her apparitions in Medjugorje were her last on earth. On March 25, 1990, she gave the following message. Dear children, I am with you even if you are not conscious of it. I want to protect you from everything that Satan offers you and through which he wants to destroy you. As I bore Jesus in my womb, so also, dear children, do I wish to bear you unto holiness. God wants to save you and sends you messages through man, nature, and so many things which can only help you to understand that you must change the direction of your life. Therefore, little children, understand also the greatness of the gift which God is giving you through me, so that I may protect you with my mantle and lead you to the joy of life. Thank you for having responded to my call. The visionaries are each being given ten secrets about future events in the world. Visionary Mariana Soldo was the first to receive all ten secrets. She will tell a priest ten days before each secret is to occur, and together they will fast on bread and water for seven days. Then, three days before the event predicted by the secret, the priest will reveal that secret to the world. The fulfillment of these secrets will be a confirmation of the apparitions and a stimulus for the conversion of the world. At Medjugorje, we're told that after several warnings, there will be a third secret revealed that will be like a great sign or a great wonder, a great miracle. And uh, this will itself be kind of a final warning before chastisements occur. Uh, we're told by one of the visionaries, Mediana, that these events can occur one one day and one day the very next day. So uh, we, don't, uh, we don't know. Only the visionaries know that or will know it just before these events occur. The Blessed Mother calls all to return to church, and Catholics especially to return to the sacraments, asking people to let Mass be the center of their lives. She spoke in a special way about the West in October of 1981. The West has made civilization progress, but without God, as if they were their own creators. Whole regions of the church would be healed if believers would go to confession once a month. In 1982, Mariana Soldo was terrified by an apparition of Satan. He asked her to renounce the Madonna and follow him promising her happiness in love and life. She rejected him, and immediately the Virgin arrived, causing Satan to flee. The Blessed Mother then gave Mariana the following message. Excuse me for this, but you must realize that Satan exists. One day he appeared before the throne of God and asked permission to submit the church to a period of trial. God gave him permission to try the church for one century. This century is under the power of the devil, but when the secrets confided to you come to pass, his power will be destroyed. Even now, he is beginning to lose his power and has become aggressive. He is destroying marriages, creating division among priests, and is responsible for obsessions and murder. You must protect yourselves against these things through fasting and prayer, especially community prayer. Carry blessed objects with you, put them in your house, and restore the use of holy water. This message to Mariana confirmed Pope Leo XIII's vision of special satanic oppression in the 20th century. Mariana was raised in communist Sarajevo and had never heard of Pope Leo's vision. Through fasting and prayer, one can stop wars. One can suspend the laws of nature. Well, it's very interesting that uh, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, where Medjugorje is, you had the horrible war. In Rwanda, where the apparitions of Kabale took place, you had a terrible war. Now we look to see what happens at those places where our Blessed Mother has allegedly appeared since that time. In Italy, in Ireland, in South America, in and allegedly in the United States. Are we going to see the same upheaval? In 1988, Estella Ruiz was working as an administrator in the Arizona school system and was not a particularly religious person. She believed the reports of people being visited by Jesus and Mary, but just wasn't interested in them. She was focused on her career. I knew where I was going. 
I was in charge of my life, and everybody stepped out of the way. And that's where I was at when our Blessed Mother came into my life. It was early in the morning, and uh, I, from a, an area where a picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe is hanging, I heard a voice say to me, Good morning, daughter. And that was the first time that I heard her. Of course, I didn't want to believe it because, um, you know, now in this day and age, to educated people, this does not happen. And if it happens, you know where they're going to put you. What I receive is our apparitions. I see our Blessed Mother. I see her three dimension. Um, she speaks to me. She moves. She, I hear her audibly. And another thing that happens to me is when she speaks, I feel it in my heart. Our Blessed Lady appeared. But she appeared as Our Lady of the Americas dressed in blue and white. And uh, there I asked who she was and who had sent her. And she told me, look around in this church. And in that church there are many, many um, forms of how she has appeared throughout the ages. They have many statues and paintings of her, of her apparitions. And so I looked around and I saw this. And she said, I am all of these. I am the same one. I have appeared in many forms throughout the world, throughout the ages, and, but I am the same one. But at this time I come as my Immaculate Heart, as this is the reign of my Immaculate Heart, and I have come to wage war against Satan. And she said that she had words to say to the Americas because the Americas had very deep and profound problems that had to be um, addressed and she was and that she had come to address those problems and that I would be her messenger uh, as she as she talked to her children in the America and she calls us to change our lives because she knows that if we really want to that if we really use the gift that God gave us uh, which is free will we can choose to be good people we can choose to change our lives. We can choose God over Satan. And so, because we are able to do that, she calls us to that. And so she gives us hope that as human beings, especially in the Americas, that we can, that we can find that peace that God offers. But we have to change. Like Estella Ruiz, Jim Singer was just an ordinary business professional. He had scoffed at reported appearances of Jesus and Mary. Then on May 28, 1989, while talking with his wife, Jim says he experienced his first visit from the Lord. Jim's wife thought he was having a heart attack until he became covered in a luminous light and floated over the bed. As we were talking about our wedding anniversary plans, Suddenly before me, uh, there was a rapid blending of colors which exploded, or I don't even know, I, I'm not even sure if that's a correct word, maybe imploded, but there was a tremendous flash of intense brilliance. What happened uh, was right in the midst of that brilliance, there was an image of a being that came walking towards me. And I can tell you, jumping a few steps ahead, I basically knew instantly in whose presence I was. And let me share, some of it, uh, some part of that realization comes from my deep belief in God in my own way. Uh, the reason I say that is, the reason I say I knew instantly in whose presence I was because, A, I felt completely transparent. By transparent I mean I knew instantly that this being in whose presence I was in knew every single thing about me. There was no place to hide. And I, but above all, I felt incredibly warm and loved. One of the key things that he said, that the, the time has come that we can no longer survive without his direct intervention. Jim said, Jesus told him that his ancestral homeland would be on the front pages of the news because it would come under attack from tremendous evil forces. Two years later, the worst war on European soil since World War II broke out in Jim's native country of Croatia. 
What will happen if the Americas, Bosnia and Rwanda, do not heed the many warnings and heaven's plan for world peace? All things were created through him, for him, and all things are held together by him. Now, if we, through the use of our own free will, choose to depart from the one that holds all things together, what happens if he allows us to wander in, in this world uh, apart from the things that he holds together? What if, what, just let us imagine what kind, what kind of experience shall we go through. So is it really the justice of God or is it punishment of God? And justice of God uh, has to fit in for the sake of the lambs that are being persecuted, the sake of the lambs who are trying very hard to work to be worthy of God's salvation. From 1990 to 1995, it is estimated that natural disasters have cost the U.S. economy over $150 billion, including uninsured plus insured assets. These chastisements are continuing at an alarming frequency and intensity. Our Blessed Mother has never said that the weather is, uh, is uh, being allowed by God, uh, but she has said in many instances the earth trembles as the uh, conduct of my children in the world gets worse as the years go by. The earth trembles, and when there's been earthquakes, she has said that. The, the heavens cry, she has said, after big floodings. She says the heavens cry to see my children in the, in the tremendous amount of sin offending God. I believe that we can see, we're going to see an escalation of, um, of uh, weather, severity of weather, as um, the children of God continue not to listen to uh, Our Lady calling for change. You are going to be seeing uh, many, many events, particularly uh, in terms of uh, environmental uh, weather, and uh, seismic disturbances, and then the tremendous destruction of areas through floods and so on, and you won't have an opportunity to recover when you'll be hit the second time around. The net result will be uh, that the backbone of, the, uh, of the, the economy of North American continent will be broken. After World War II in 1945, a U.S. soldier asked German mystic Therese Neumann if America would ever be destroyed or invaded by war. She responded, No. At the end of this century, America will be destroyed economically by natural disasters. This was confirmed by the Blessed Mother in a message for the U.S., which she gave to Father Gobi while in Malvern, Pennsylvania in 1990. The moment of divine justice and of great mercy has now arrived. You will know the hour of weakness and poverty, the hour of suffering and defeat, the purifying hour of the great chastisement. In 1991, Jesus spoke to Jim Singer concerning Satan's activity during this end time final battle. Through the ages, you have been warned what the malefactor is preparing for you during these final times. Only by your conversion and sincere love will you be protected. The individuals who lead all my children are attempting to prevent the evils by their hard hearts. It is the responsibility of all those who lead you to turn to Peter, your shepherd, John Paul II, who will take you to the path of peace and love. I have proclaimed to you through all my chosen children, through whom you receive the gift of my word, that I guide Peter, your shepherd, in my spirit. But above all, we are in Denver to hear the one true word of life. Our Blessed Mother gave us a message at one point, and uh, this was after our Holy Father had come to Denver. And she said, if something were to happen, we are to follow the Vicar of Christ instituted on earth. And she had given this title to Pope John Paul 
uh, during the Denver trip. So we know that it is our Holy Father, John Paul. I often say that you who are young bring hope to the world. The future of the world shines in your eyes. Open up your heart to Christ. The deepest joy there is in life is the joy that comes from God and is found in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In 1962, Conchita of Garabandal was told by the Blessed Virgin Mary that after Pope John XXIII, there would be only three more popes until the end times. Then in 1963, after Paul VI became Pope, she said, Now there would only be two more popes before the end times, and one would reign for a short period of time. John Paul I had a short reign as prophesied, and now John Paul II is the Pope of the end times. Furthermore, St. John Bosco's famous 1862 vision of the end times battle at the close of the 20th century, depicted the reigning pope being wounded and then recovering. This was fulfilled when Pope John Paul II was wounded on May 13, 1981, the anniversary of Fatima. I sum up for myself, looking at the pro people I call prophets today, if I sum up the common denominator achievement or the point to which the, their prophecies urge me mentally and spiritually, it is the apostasy and the arrival of the man of destiny, the Antichrist. Before the day of justice arrives, there will be given to people a sign in the heavens of this sort. All light in the heavens will be extinguished, and there will be great darkness over the whole earth. Then, the sign of the cross will be seen in the sky. Maria Esperanza talks about the coming of a comet, which was prophesied to her 50 years ago, an event, she says, will happen within the next three years. It's going to be like a star, most beautiful, most bright, even brighter than the star that announced the coming of Christ when he was born. Maria says the comet signals the direct intervention of Jesus. In a great event, he will make himself felt in every heart. Oh, friend, the true prophet of God in Great Controversy 624 says, quote, Fearful sights of a supernatural character will soon be revealed in the heavens. In token of miracle-working demons, the spirits of devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and to the whole world to fasten them in deception and urge them on to unite with Satan in his last struggle against the government of heaven. As the crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ. He heals the diseases of the people, and then in his assumed character of Christ, he claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday and commands all to hollow the day which he has blessed. He declares that those who persist in keeping holy the seventh day are blaspheming his name by refusing to listen to his angels sent to them with light and truth. This is the strong, almost overmastering delusion. The oppressive evil perpetuated by Satan, as Pope Leo XIII heard in 1884, has penetrated every fabric of our society throughout the world. The warning, or life review, will show us a panoramic view of the choices we have made. It is God's ultimate act of mercy. It will be a day of personal decision for each one of us. 
The times are urgent, and heaven calls for conversion, fasting, prayer, and penance. We need not have fear and anxiety. We are coming to a threshold of great hope if we choose to live according to God's love. Visionaries around the world confirm that soon we will be entering a new era, a great era of peace. And what will the era of peace be like? friend, beside the Roman Catholic visionaries telling what the devil told them while masquerading as Mary, you're going to see the Roman Catholic attack on God's SDA Church revealed by this book, The Thunder of Justice. This was written by Roman Catholics and forwarded by Malachi Martin, the Vatican insider who wrote the book Keys of This Blood. That book predicted uh, that Rome would win out over the superpowers the U.S. and Russia to try to regain control of the world, just like God's prophet predicted in Great Controversy 565. You're going to learn what the devil, as Mary, has told us through these Catholic visionaries. Now, before I show you some shocking things in this book revealing uh, this part of the attack on God's church, let me share with you some Amazing points. Number one, Catholicism is becoming so infiltrated with spiritualism, and really already has, that it's able to make the whole world drunk with the wine of her false doctrines. Paganism, Islamic, Christian, Protestantism, Buddhism, Atheism, yes, and even many Seventh-day Adventists, many of whom will soon go along with the devil's law, the Sunday law, uh, uh, and receive the mark of the beast. Point number two, you're going to see that the apparitions of Mary, which is the devil, are calculated to, number one, immunize Roman Catholics against God's true three angels' messages by getting the Roman Catholic people used to hearing the same uh, terminology that Seventh-day Adventists use in giving the three angels' message, but they'll be hearing it from Roman Catholic people and from supposedly Mary. Number two, the apparitions of Mary are to seduce even Seventh-day Adventists uh, into uh, believing, going along somewhat with spiritualism, even to fool their senses. And believe it or not, it's amazing, but many of them will be fooled by spiritualism. Uh, many of them will go along with these things. Number three, uh, the appearances of Mary, which is the devil, is calculated to actually invade Seventh-day Adventist churches to seduce the dear Adventist people who are not filling their minds with the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. So pay close attention now. I'm going to share some amazing things. Point number one, the Roman Catholic Church is now presenting a bewitching counterfeit of God's three angels' messages by having their own people use the very terminology that Seventh-day Adventists use in giving the three angels' messages. This is a subtle, amazing Roman Catholic attack on God's SDA Church by attacking the SDA Bible message by giving a counterfeit, perverted version of it to the Catholic people and thus to the world through supposedly Mary from heaven. This is amazing. An example of this is when you just heard Malachi Martin say that they are looking for the Antichrist. Can you imagine that? And you heard the Roman Catholic man say that the end is near and that we're in the last days. Point number two, Satan is using the Marian movement of priests to help counterfeit the work of God's SDA people. This movement is composed of over 100,000 priests who are now under the absolute dictation and direction of Mary, which is the devil. Thus, uh, this reveals that spiritualism is now in control within the Roman Catholic Church. As God's prophet has told us, he, she says, quote, Satan determines to unite them in one body and thus strengthen his cause by sweeping all 
Into the Ranks of Spiritualism, fourth volume of uh, Spirit of Prophecy, page 406. Point number three, the Marian movement is now teaching what have been up to this time the peculiar doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I tell people that if we don't preach Revelation and the three angels' messages now, Rome is going to do it, and the devil is going to do it. They're going to give it to the world in a perverted manner, thus inoculating them so that when they hear the true message, they won't believe it. They'll say, well, that sounds a lot like what my own church has been giving me. That sounds a lot like what Mary has been saying. But I know that Mary has given the true version, and you Seventh-day Adventists must be giving a counterfeit. Friend, do you see the danger of this thing? This is a real attack, Roman Catholic attack, on God's Seventh-day Adventist church. It's unbelievable. Rome is teaching end-time events using the very words that are found only in the writings of Ellen G. White, such as the little flock and the remnant, and other terminology peculiar to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Oh, friend, may God help us to get his last warning message out to the world. May he give us, grant us his tender love for souls, is my prayer. May we pray, O oh God, Please give me your tender love for souls. Oh, help me know your love for me as Jesus died on the cross and shed his precious blood for me to wash away my sins. Dear Father, give me your love for souls. Help me to reach them. Friend, pray. I pray that we'll all pray that prayer and God will do it for you. Uh, point number four, Mary, which is the devil, is now appearing all over the world. But we know that the real Mary is dead. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6 and verse 10. Uh, sometimes I've been tempted to put up a great billboard uh, along the great freeways saying, in great giant letters, Mary is dead. Ecclesiastes 9, 5. Boy, what an atomic bomb that would set off. Mary is dead. The dead are dead, friend. This is one of the two great attacks of the devil. The... Uh, uh, Sunday law, Sunday sacredness, and the state of the dead, teaching people that the dead aren't really dead. But in these verses, we know that Mary is dead. Ecclesiastes 9, 5, and 6, and 10. And Job 14, 12 to 15. Psalms 115, verse 17. Psalms 146, verse 4. We need to know these things. Please memorize, memorize the very verses we're going to need in the near future, when you're brought to court, when you're in jail. Naturally, the, Jesus promised the Holy Spirit will teach you just what to say, and you won't have to premeditate, but we need to memorize it now so the Holy Spirit can bring us back. Friend, what a tragedy that Seventh-day Adventist people are so asleep that the devil knows that he is able to bewitch the thinking of a vast number of Seventh-day Adventists by speaking of end-time events in the very language that they are used to. Amazing. Point number five. In this book, The Thunder of Justice, uh, we see similar terms used by Mary, or which is the devil, uh, that Jesus used through his prophet Ellen White to God's people. On page 280, I'm going to turn to that. Page 200 and 80. Now, you can't see it here, but I'm going to show you. Page 280, it says, quote, Flames will be cast down from heaven, which will destroy all sinners and the work of the evil one. Abysses, mountains, and flaming lava will swallow up entire villages. Earthquakes, floods, electrocutions, tempests, uh, tempestuous seas, suicides, drugs, and illnesses of all kinds. On page 353, we read, quote, The earth will be turned into a huge graveyard. The bodies of the wicked and of the righteous will cover the face of the earth. This crisis will be sudden. Here on page 115, I quote, 
there will be a series of wars until the last war. Before the last war, there will be a kind of false peace in the world. People will think of nothing but amusement. The wicked will give themselves over to all kinds of sin. Oh, friend, the devil is pretending to be merry and is talking just like Ellen White talks. What a subtle attack on God's SDA church to neutralize the last warning message of God so that a Roman Catholic who hears God's message given by Seventh-day Adventists will say, oh, we have the true church. I hear that similar message from Mary from heaven. Why should I hear, listen to you? You see, and uh, uh, so seemingly Mary is preaching the three angels' messages. Here on page 115, it says, quote, The seasons will be altered. The earth will produce nothing but bad fruit. The stars will lose their regular motion. The moon will reflect only a reddish glow. Water and fire will give the earth's globe convulsions and terrible earthquakes which will swallow up mountains and cities. Here on page 343 we read, quote, There will be a great famine all over the world. Nothing will grow. The whole world will be hungry. Of course, you know that God's prophet predicts this in Great Controversy and also in Joel chapter 1. We all will be, it says in quoting, continuing to quote in this book, The Thunder of Justice, it says, quote, All will be lacking food. San Francisco will be swallowed up. On page 344, it says, There will be an end of San Francisco and New York. There will be nobody left in those cities. Well, the devil knows what he's planning, and he knows a little bit of what God will permit him to do. Here on page 341 of this book, it says, quote, The war is near. It will be started with false peace treaties. Many countries will be involved. China, Russia, and the United States. Fire will descend from heaven, and this will be a sign that the justice of God has of now fixed the hour of his great manifestation. Page 9 of this Roman Catholic book, supposedly Mary, here on page 9, it uses terms that Ellen White used. Mary the devil says, quote, Strive for holiness. Pray, pray, pray. Friend, Ellen White uses that same phrase, pray, pray, pray. Now the devil is using it, supposedly as Mary. M Mary here calls for all to be converted and says, quote, time is short. Mary talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit and of the great sealing of God's people. Unbelievable. Here on page 309, uh, it tells of the Holy Spirit coming with great power. Of course, you know that Ellen White, God's true prophet, tells us that when the loud cry of the latter rain comes, the whole world will be uh, lightened up with the glory of God. Now, uh, the devil, as Mary, calls for fasting and prayer. Of course, God has told us the same thing. Uh, here, the devil is repeating what God has said, uh, adding little twists on it, uh, to counterfeit it, to counteract it, to pervert it, to neutralize God's true method, message in the minds of the people. So they'll either throw the whole thing out or they'll get the message from Mary from heaven instead of these Seventh-day Adventist people who are thought to be a cult. You see how dangerous and how subtle this thing is. This truly is a, an attack, a Roman Catholic attack on God's Seventh-day Adventist church. Mary claims that she is the last day prophetess to the remnant church concerning the three angels' message on, th on page 56. It says, quote, I am the mother of the second advent. I am preparing you for his second coming, unquote. Oh, friend, on page 90, Mary, the devil, as Mary says, quote, I am the virgin of revelation. 
in me the masterpiece of the Father is realized. Unquote. On page 91, it says, quote, I am opening for you the sealed book that the secrets contained in it may be revealed. Only in this way are you able to carry out your important mission. Oh yes, here Mary, the devil, is talking to a hundred thousand priests, giving them their orders, what they will be doing, oh friend, and what they will be preaching. They will be preaching a version of the Seventh-day Adventist message. Friend, what an attack on God's Seventh-day Adventist church. Mary here, the devil, is talking to these priests, hundred thousand or more, uh, oh, here on page 100 of this book. Mary quotes word for word the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 and describes their meaning. It's interesting. Page 100 and 101, Mary, or the devil, talks about the mark of the beast. Can you imagine that? Page 356, it says, quote, America will know poverty and defeat, unquote. Oh, friend, in great controversy, God's true pr prophet has also told us that when this nation passes the National Sunday Law, national apostasy will lead to national ruin. Here the devil, as Mary, is telling that the U.S. will know poverty and defeat and be brought down to the level of Mexico. Oh, friend, are you prepared for that? Friend, may we study like we've never studied in our life. And may we pray, oh God, give me your love for souls. Please, dear Jesus, use me for them. The devil friend is telling people what God has said uh, far more than God's people are telling them. But Satan is twisting it, twisting what God has said to get out a message similar to the message of, of the Adventists, but it'll be given by Roman Catholics. Uh, they'll be mocking Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, their message will immunize themselves against the true message when it's really given by God's true people. Friend, this is not only a Roman Catholic attack. This is a subtle, terrible, and shocking Catholic attack. It's more subtle than I've ever seen any attack to be, uh, to neutralize. And, and not only that, isn't it strange that many Seventh-day Adventist ministers actually encourage Seventh-day Adventist people to say nothing, or almost nothing, but most of them, not, many of them nothing, about the real three angels' messages, or the beast of Revelation 13, or the image of the beast, or the mark of the beast. Some Adventist ministers actually forbid their people to give this message. It's amazing. Well, friend, I can tell you right now, anybody forbidding you to give the three angels' messages, I can guarantee you that person's of the devil. I don't care who they are. I don't care what kind of minister they are, or conference official, or anybody else. God has commanded us to get the three angels' messages out to the world. May God help us do it. And thank God we're going to do it by the mighty power of God, and the devil cannot stop it. Yes, you Seventh-day Adventists... Uh, you watching this program, give this program to your pastor. Let him watch it. And I'm telling you, Seventh-day Adventist pastors, as an ordained Seventh-day Adventist minister myself, I and you together need to be banding together. If you're a faithful Adventist pastor, not a corrupt one, but if you're a faithful Adventist minister, we can together with your people, with Adventist people all over this world, all unite, not in error. Not in the celebration movement, not in corruption, not in the Roman Catholic uh, type of ecumenical movement. Oh no, unite in the truth of God, in the word of God, and in the spirit of prophecy. If you're faithful like Nicodemus was, after all the rest of the ministers ran out, if you're faithful, we must unite in truth. And I beg of you pastors, Adventist pastors, train your Adventist people like never in your life to get the three angels' messages out. Don't forbid them to do it. Don't work for the devil, commanding people not to do it, and saying only people that are authorized, authorized, it's this Roman Catholic thing, authorized. No, say, people, we must, uh, we must learn how to do it. Teach your people how to do it, and then do it with them. 
Do it with them, friend, and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. We must lovingly, kindly, but boldly proclaim the real three angels' messages now before the peoples are inoculated by a false counterfeit message from Mary and from the devil. The main consolation, there's several consolations that I can see in these things. Number one is that many, I would say most, Roman Catholic people right now do not yet know what you know. Most Catholic people around the world do not know what here is in this book and of these visionaries. Now they know, most of them know about these uh, uh, Mary supposedly appearing, but they don't know about the false three angels messages yet. Most of them haven't heard it yet. The devil through Mary and through the Catholic priests are pushing it out. But I say, may God help us, Seventh-day Adventists, true Seventh-day Adventists, get it out to them before they get a counterfeit message. What do you say? Again, I say, plead with God, pray. Oh, dear Jesus, you died on the cross of Calvary for me. Give me your love for souls, dear Savior, to reach the dear people. And friend, if you pray like that, dear Jesus will do it. He will do it. Now, uh, that is the main reason why I've written this book, National Sunday Law. It contains God's three angels' messages in such a plain and simple way that even a child can see it. And I praise our mighty God that He has inspired Seventh-day Adventist pastors, Bible workers, call porters, Adventist book centers, church members, historic Adventist members all over this world, even conference officials, to get nearly 10 million of these uh, little uh, National Sunday Law preachers out to the world in 26 languages. But friend, there's a lot of world. Six billion people, we've all just scratched the surface. Uh, again, I say thank God, but at least we can do something before the dear people are dead. Should we wait till the seven last plagues fall on them before we get the message out to them? Should we wait until the devil as Mary gets to them a counterfeit message and the Roman Catholic priests and the Catholic people are preaching the three angels' messages before we get it out to them? Oh, friend, I say, in view of all of this, I will say that all who receive 1,000 of these little NSL preachers to reach about 3,000 souls because there's an average of about three people in each home. I will say that everyone that gets 1,000 of these little preachers for a donation of 39 cents each with free shipping, I will say that you will receive all 14 of this video series free. Now you might be watching this one for the first time and have missed the first 13 programs that give you a mountain of evidence of this Roman Catholic attack. You might be a preacher watching this program. I will say you will receive all 14 of them and you will have no doubt whatsoever that Rome is attacking God's SDA church. But I'm telling you for your encouragement and to open the eyes of many people, anyone that gets a thousand of these little preachers to reach about 3,000 souls you'll receive all 14 of these video programs free when you ask to open the eyes. And I will say that you have my permission to copy, to copy these programs for whomever you wish. Now is no time to make money. I tell people, friend, you live for money now, you'll die with your money. You Adventist preachers, you live for money now. All these things. I'm telling you, friend, you as a pastor, if you live for money, you will die with your money. If you live for ease and pleasure, you'll end up with the mark of the beast. You Adventist pastors, look at your house. You've got a nicer house than most your church members have. Look at your car. Most of your members don't have a car like you've got. I'm telling you, friend, you need to be an example for your own members. You need to be born again. You need to face reality and say, Oh God, forgive and save me and use me to, to help your Adventist people to know Jesus who died on the cross. And dear Father, help us to train together 
to reach the world with the three angels' messages. Oh, friend, if you'll do it, God will help you, preachers. God loves you, and He will help you. On page 11 of this book, Mary has said that Mary will appear, if necessary, in every household. Unquote. Do you comprehend that? That's shocking. Are you prepared for Mary to appear in your house? Are you prepared for what is coming on this earth? Are you prepared for dead loved ones to appear so that you can say, Get thee hence Satan in Jesus' name, for it is written, The living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Ecclesiastes 9.5 Are you prepared to give a Bible answer before the courts, before in the jails? And are you learning these things now, friend? We need to memorize. Memorize. Remember that word. Memorize the Bible. These verses about the state of their dead, about the Sabbath, about the law of God, about the love of God, about the grace of God, about the mark of the beast, all of these things. Friend, we need to memorize it. Teach your children. They don't learn this in school. You're fooling yourself if you think they are. Come with your children. Teach them these things. Help them memorize these things. We're going to need it. The Holy Spirit will bring it back to us when we come to court. But you need it in your head first so that He can bring it back. If it's not in your head, He won't bring it back. May God help us not to make a fool out of God, a fool out of yourself, and a fool out of the message of Christ, and a fool out of God's Seventh-day Adventist Church. May He help you and I, friend, to learn the Word of God is never in our lives. Here in pay, on page 353 of this book, uh, The Thunder of Justice, it says, quote, St. Peter and St. Paul will come down from heaven and preach in the whole world. Oh, friend, do you see what the devil is doing? What are we doing to help save precious souls? We know we can't save anybody. We're only saved by God's free grace. Thank God for that. But those who are saved by God's free grace will have a yearning love, a craving love in their souls, burning by the Holy Spirit to win souls for whom Jesus died. We know what Rome is doing. What are you and I doing to reach the dear people? May God help us, is our prayer, to reach them for whom dear Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. What are we doing to help save them from the mark of the beast and receive the seal of the living God? Friend, please pray. Please pray that in this late hour of this earth's history, the lovely Jesus, who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for you and has nail prints in his hands for you. Pray that he'll so fill you with his Holy Spirit and with his love for some that you will reach them by the thousands while there's any time left. And God will help you. Is the devil getting the Roman Catholics to pray the blasphemous Roman Catholic rosary more than you are praying to the living God? Would you like to have the tender love of God flowing through your hearts for precious souls? Would you like to be so close to the lovely Jesus that he can help you to reach many, many of them? Then ask. Ask, and it shall be done unto you, Jesus said. For whenever you pray that kind of prayer to save souls, that's the kind of prayer that God delights to honor. He will fill you with His Holy Spirit. Ask for it. Uh, he'll cleanse you from all sin. It says the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Praise God. Friend, are you filled with guilt? Just look at that promise. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If you confess, He is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse you. What a wonderful Savior we have. A wonderful Lord. He died, friend, for you. Jesus died for you. He shed His blood for you. It says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. 
that blood friend is yours as you look upon Jesus on the cross in simple faith total surrender your sins are gone praise God it says with his stripes we are healed yes dear Jesus will use you in this crisis hour the prophet of God tells us that there are two things that we do not understand number one we don't understand the shortness of time in this program you've gotten a little glimpse of it as never before you've gotten a spine tingling glimpse of the shortness of time in this program time now is so short that if God were to reveal how many months there are a little child could count them number two God tells us that we do not comprehend the value of a soul oh friend I pray that will help us to comprehend it the value of a soul Jesus would have come down and died for one soul that's how valuable one soul is that one soul is you but it's also every other soul in this world may God help us have his love for them would you like to get a little glimpse of the value of a soul then look at the cross of Calvary look at Jesus hanging there look at him in Gethsemane sweating blood tasting death for every man Look at him as he hangs on the cross, paying the horrible penalty for your sins, for every sin you've committed, and the sins of the whole world. Look at him hanging there and you'll see the value of a soul. If you and I could get one glimpse of what, for one minute, of the glories of heaven, just one minute, a glimpse of the gorgeous city of God, the tree of life, the river of life, those unending angel hosts, the lovely Jesus, and the vastness of the breathtaking home of the saved, forever in paradise. Oh, friend, we, if we could get just a little glimpse of that, we would have a glimpse of the value of us all. I praise our mighty God that he has given us tremendous encouragement, tremendous promises, telling us that King Jesus is stronger than the devil. The lovely Jesus and his humble SDA people are going to win. They will be persecuted, jailed, sentenced to death, but they, friend, with Jesus, are going to win. The devil's Roman Catholic attack can counterfeit, but it cannot stop the last mighty movement of the work of God. Praise God, friend. Early writings, 2.30 and 2.31 says, quote, The angel from heaven came to John in majesty, his countenance beaming with the excellent glory of God. He revealing to John scenes of deep and thrilling interest in the history of the church of God and brought before him the perilous conflicts which Christ's followers were to endure. John saw them passing through fiery trials, made white and tried, and finally victorious overcomers gloriously saved in the kingdom of God the countenance of the angel grew radiant with joy and was exceeding glorious as he showed John the final triumph of the church of God as the apostle beheld the final deliverance of the church he was carried away with the glory of the scene and with deep reverence and awe fell at the feet of the angel unquote oh friend I'm going to give you just a little glimpse of the value of one soul in the life of a man this man was a member of the Nazi party in Poland he was a businessman he was very rich with horror he saw the Sabbath keepers being murdered in the Warsaw ghetto just like the Sabbath keepers were murdered in Waco exactly 50 years later and just like Sabbath keepers are going to be murdered in the near future before their close of probation. This led this man to bribe the Nazi leaders, giving them um, suitcases full of money in exchange for Jews, which he received and rescued from the death camps and put them to work in his factories making bullets and shells. By the way, not one of those bullets would ever fire, and he was risking his life to save many of these Jews. By the end of the war, he had succeeded 
in saving over 1,100 Jews from the death camps. And finally, he learned that the war was over. He told them that they were free, but he said that he himself would be hunted as a criminal and must flee for his life. He even encouraged them to keep the Sabbath. Watch closely and you will get a glimpse of the value of one soul. The unconditional surrender of Germany has just been announced. At midnight tonight, the war is over. Tomorrow, you'll begin the process of looking for survivors of your families. In most cases, you won't find them. After six long years of murder, victims are being mourned throughout the world. We've survived. Thank your fearless Stern and others among you who worried about you are faced to death at every moment. I'm a member of the Nazi party. I'm a munitions manufacturer. I'm a profiteer of slave labor. I am a criminal. At midnight, you'll be free and I'll be hunted. I shall remain with you until five minutes after midnight, after which time, and I hope you'll forgive me, I have to flee. I know you have received orders from our commandant, which he has received from his superiors to dispose of the population of this camp. Now would be the time to do it. Here they are, they're all here. This is your opportunity. Or you could leave and return to your families as men instead of murderers. Ha, 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 ha. 